is if you can trigger a person's heart, you get them to feel something. When they feel something, that's when real learning and change can take place. So welcome back to Unleashed Learning TV and Unleashed Learning Radio for our podcast listeners. Now, do you have a story to tell that you think could inspire others? Or have you wondered how to use your own personal story or life experience in a way that could help make learning stick for others? Now, I hope you do because in today's episode, we've brought the founder and host of Cup of TV, Luke Cook, or Cookie, as he's known, to the studio today. Now, Luke teaches people how to use their own story to inspire the lives of others. And as the host of Cup of TV, he's helping people share their powerful stories to impact the lives of others. He's in the studio, so let's get started. So, uh, Luke, welcome to Unleashed Learning TV. Thank you, mate. <laughs> nice to see well, you in person. I'm excited today. I'm very excited. So, as you know, what we do is we work with businesses, schools, and organizations to embed a system to make learning stick for everyone. Yep. And what's been happening lately is storytelling. People are asking us about storytelling. Where does that fit? to make learning stick, and you love storytelling. No, right? I love storytelling. So that is why you are here. That's why I've based my whole career based off storytelling. It's been amazing. Perfect person to interview. So um, if I got it right, let's just make sure I got this. Let's do it. As the host of Couple Life, you've listened to over 300 stories. I've had conversations with 300 different experts and heard their stories from all different walks of life. Yeah. So what have you learned about the power of a story or a story? Uh, when you speak to 300 different people, you, you sort of try and now find what the story is that's going to make the biggest impact. You know, we've spoken to Olympians, I've spoken to people that have been on the brink of losing it all. That means their life, financials, uh, business leaders, um, and storytelling is core to not only bring to life their journey, but also maybe change the person's life who is watching. Um, so storytelling to me is probably one of the most powerful tools that e each of us has in us, in us. Wow. Wow. Well, I mean, if you've listened to 300, you can see what works and doesn't work, I would mm -hmm. guess. Right. Mm -hmm. And what lasts for you. So, um, I want to know what, what should educators and leaders who are working to make learning stick for everybody, um, what should they be thinking about their own story? So a lot of times they've got this content to get out. But what we're saying, what you're saying is you've got a story to tell. You so need to personalize it. You need it to make it about your journey around whatever you're trying to bring to life. Um, if you're just reading something from a script, you can do that really well. But what you're missing is the vulnerability in, in you being able to portray what you're getting out of it. Um, when I tell my story, right, that is my story around how Kappa evolved and all that type of stuff. When my previous business partner, Jill, tried to tell the story, she didn't add her own personal touches to it. So it didn't seem as authentic as what it could be. So I think from a leader's perspective, every leader has the, it, their opportunity to leave a mark on each and an individual person, but you must start with understanding you and your understanding of what story you need to share. So you just said something really interesting. You've got to know something about yourself. Yeah. In our system, who the educator is and who the teacher is really does matter. Mm. And you said there, we've got to know about ourselves a bit and then know how to make that connection to what we're trying to get to stick in many ways. Can I tell you what yeah. I did? I um, uh, recently went through this, probably in the last sort of 18 months, where I time-stamped my whole life. I looked back from when I was a young kid mm. all the way through my work career, and I started thinking about what I call and this is the way my story comes about, is that life is like one massive puzzle, right? We all have a vision of who we are, whether it's a leader or an individual. In that puzzle are pieces, and each one of those pieces represents a moment in your life or career. Now, sometimes those moments are good, sometimes they're bad, sometimes they're big, and sometimes they're small. But in when we're looking at our journey and story, whilst not one piece defines you, all pieces do make you. So when I was time stamping my life, I was looking at all those moments from when my dad passed away when I was four to when COVID pretty much ruined my business. Mm. And the importance of understanding your learning around each one of those pieces to be able to share what you learnt from it in a way that that, that story could galvanise someone's thoughts was probably the biggest thing that I've learnt about myself yet. Wow. in the last few years so for me 
if you are a leader, you have learnt a lot of things in your career, in your journey, but how often do you stop to think about what you've learned? Wow. You know, we talk about who the teacher is matters. There's a connection between who the teacher is and how learning sticks or how the, who the leader is mm. and how learning sticks. And you had to do some reflection mm. and see the connections so you can, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but to tell the story authentically, you had to know yourself in a certain way and how these pieces came together. And not only that, when I started to do that, I saw pieces come together from parts of my life that I didn't realize mm. they would come together. And this is the thing about pieces, right? Yeah. Sometimes you're dealt with a moment that you go, I don't even know where that piece fits in my life. I'm just going to park it. I'm not even going to think about it. I don't think that's the right thing you should do. You should be thinking about, well, what am I learning from that? And then one day, it could be in five years, it could mm. be 10 years, yeah. but that, that piece will come back at the right time whenever you, when you may need it or when someone else may need it. Um, so yeah, the reflection part was a core part that I went through over the last couple of years to, to help tell my story. I love you said it might be someone else can use this as well. Yeah. Right? I, you said it better, but it's almost like, oh, that piece could be of service for somebody else. I think that's what stories should be. Yeah. Stories should be something that can leave an impact on someone. Mm. Um, it might not be the whole story that they resonate with, but it could just be one moment in that story that really impacts them. That impact could change their life. That's right. It could save their life. We had that last year in Kappa when someone tuned in on their lowest day. Mm. And I shared my vulnerability, my story, to someone who was almost coaching me live on that live conversation. But someone else got something out of it as yeah. well because of the storytelling that was being shared. So, yeah, don't discount your story. Um, your story yeah. has its place. You just need to find out how to tell it properly. It's so powerful because we talk all the time about Unleashed Learning that we don't really remember facts, figures, statistics, numbers, PowerPoint, la, 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 la. There's ways that, that we organize stuff that makes it sticky. And one of the ways is the power of the story. If it's mm. used well, if it's understood why it's being used. So, um, so that brings the next question. Perfect timing. Mm. Um, what are some tips for telling our own story? Like what should we be thinking about if we want to use it in a way that's sticking rather than just like a narcissistic show, right? What's some tips you've got for using telling our own story well? Well, it has to be authentic and you have to open up your, and I'm talking about it being me telling my story as such, it has to be done in a way where you're open to be able to share your vulnerability, mm -hmm. where you may feel a little bit awkward in doing so. Yeah. Um, but that is where the biggest impact is going to occur. So understanding your own vulnerability and being able to share that in a, in a way that you're, you feel comfortable um, but will get the biggest impact because if you can trigger a person's heart, you get them to feel something. When they feel something, that's when real learning and change can take place. So for me, it's about understanding where your vulnerability is and being able to do that. Finding visual cues as well, like I just used the puzzle as an example, but um, you know, we had Gus Warland on um, Kappa who was talking about when Steve Smith, the Australian cricketer, was going through his turmoil and how he was struggling with his mental health. But Steve Smith used the balloon analogy where, you know, if you blow into the balloon, which is your emotions, and you keep on blowing and blowing and blowing, it's gonna burst if you don't let it out. And, you know, that moment when Gus was sharing that, it visualized, even though he didn't right. use a PowerPoint, he didn't use anything. It was the thing that you could relate, relate to in the story that made it easy to remember. So, so we remember, different. sorry to interrupt you, but it's the symbols, it's the, it's the symbolism, it's the piece of the story. That's actually the brain works. That's how we remember stuff. But you also said something really interesting, which mm. we talk a lot about, it's the emotion. Mm. So emotion makes learning stick because it's in the body. 100%. So when you describe that, I'm thinking, I have to be vulnerable myself, that's yeah. the educator, the leader, but I'm also working from an emotional standpoint, and that's what often sticks for people is emotion. It's the emotion and it's about taking people on a journey. Mm. It's about leading to the next part of the destination on that journey. Um, getting people to really think and even trying in their own heads to almost try and work out where the ending's going yeah. to be. Yeah. Um, but if you, if you nail your story well enough, you're gonna take people on a ride. There's a guy by the name of Michael Crossland. I watched him talk for 60 minutes and it was like I was on a roller coaster. Mm. I just there was the highs, there was the lows, there was the, the moments of humor um, that came through, but you know, the, the theme of the story was consistent. 
and you um, remembered it. A hundred percent. Yeah, you remember it. I mean, we were talking earlier, but we're in this kind of delivery overload. Mm. And so you're talking about emotion, you're talking about symbolism, you're talking about vulnerability, you're talking about what I kind of hear is, what do I really want to get to stick? And how mm. do I tell the story around that, that people are going to remember? Mm. And in a time of overwhelm, why this is so important. Okay, okay, excuse me. So I've got one last question if I can. Um, is there a right way or a wrong way? You've kind of alluded to the right way mm. about emotion and taking them a journey and symbolism. Is there, I hate to end on a negative, but is there a wrong way to use storytelling, do you think? Oh, I think you've got to, you've got to know the room mm. is probably the thing. Like you've got to be, um, I don't think there is any wrong way to not tell a story. Like yeah. I think, I think if you if you know the the story and you know where you can lead someone on that journey, there's all. I think it's always the right way. But there's sometimes where you just need to understand the room a little bit more, mm. and that takes a lot around the prep work. Like yes. who am I talking to? Who are these people? Where are they at in yeah. their current cycles? Because if you know the prep work around before going in to tell your story, it means you can craft your story to the right audience. And that is probably one of the most critical things. So if you don't know your audience, that's probably mm. where storytelling it, it can be. It's, I mean, I, it's like we're plugging this, but it's the key of students for the school or the yeah. key of learners because there's a way we've got to know some stuff about who they are yes. and then build the bridge between what we're trying to get at stick, but we've got to know who the audience is. Yeah. And then one of the keys we use is the preparation. So there's a way to prepare yeah. once you know who that is. So you're yeah. going to really target your audience. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, totally agree. Is there, I, I, it's not really on the question I was asked, wanted to ask, but what's the, your last message about story? I mean, you've been doing this for a long time and you're really passionate about it. Mm. We're an information overload. Is there anything you really want people to remember about story? For me, if you can understand your own story, even if it's the impact that it leaves on your family, that's the biggest impact that you could potentially mm. have. My dad died when I was four years old mm. and it only took, it took me and when he, he died when he was 39, I was 39 two years ago. Mm. And what I realized is I didn't know any stories about my dad. Um, there was nothing that was written down, recorded because it was a long time ago. Like, you know, it was probably still on big cameras about this big <laughs> back then. But what I wish I did is have those stories of him and who he was, who he was as an individual, who he was as the character, what his dreams, goals and desires were. And I think all of us, especially if you've got kids and you want to leave a legacy, to be able to articulate your story in a way that is there forever um, would be the biggest impact for, for future generations of your families and all that type of stuff. So for me, if you can get to your story, and even if you don't think it's relevant, it is to someone, and every story has its place. We say you teach who you are. I mean, you're just the perfect example about teaching who we are and the passion of what we, who we are in our history and then how it impacts the work we're doing. So yeah. that's why I wanted you here. So thank you so much for your time, Luke. Loved it. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. And as always, thank you for the work you do for the world. We are cheering you on, and we'll see you next time. So now we want to hear from you. Our question is this, how do you use story in your teaching practice? Now, some of the best conversations take place after the episode. So jump over there and join the conversation. And of course, when you're there, grab our free ebook, the five essentials for teaching, presenting, or running professional learning in a COVID post COVID world.